Welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Today my guest is Lynn Hare. And Lynn is an author and speaker that lives here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest with her family. Recently, she has written a book titled The Quest for Self-Forgiveness. And uh, I've read s some of it. I haven't finished it. And I'm telling you, it's amazing. And uh, we're going to dig deeper into this as we go. So please help me welcome uh, to the show, Lynn Hare. It's so good to have you today. Thank you, Cheryl. It's good to be here. Yes, you're amazing. So um, first, before we get into all the things about you and what you've learned in mm -hmm. your quest, can you tell our audience a little bit about your background? Sure. I'm originally from Delaware, and oh. um, I live in Portland, Oregon with my husband. I have three adult kids and two grandchildren. Okay. I'm a certified teacher, so I work as a substitute teacher by day, and I write um, and speak about our identity in Christ and the freedoms of forgiveness. Wow. I, um, I serve on the board of Oregon Christian Writers okay. and have the privilege of winning several writing awards. Wow. And my tribe are those people who want to write about kingdom. Nice. And so um, part of my journey is to help other people get their stories out there. Okay. Um, I have, I serve on the board of um, Serving Our Neighbors which is a nonprofit in Portland, Oregon. Okay. And we are empowering and equipping um, Christians to release kingdom in the marketplace. And there are events where we are doing intercession and prayer for people. There are events where we are doing teachings, releasing what God has in community. And James Autry yeah. is the director of that organization. And it's been a wonderful journey as we've prayed into what God has for our community. Right. My yeah. uh, passion is also to help people know who they are. And the Lord has given me several sessions of something where people are able to come pull out of their mind and their heart who they are with the intention of knowing that they can live with purpose mm -hmm. and that that purpose is something that they can walk in their identity, knowing and speaking and operating out of that, that core identity. Some people search for years and they it's never true. figure out who they are. And, you know, I believe we're all given gifts mm -hmm. and we're on this earth for a purpose. And until we realize what that mm -hmm. purpose is, we'll never fulfill our destiny. And we'll, which means you'll never truly be happy, right? Unless you know That's what right. that is and that purpose is. So, and when we do that purpose, it's about not what we design, but what God's purpose is. Right. And the Bible says, many are the plans in a man's heart, right. but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Right. So part of our calling in life is to find that prevailing purpose. Yes. And we don't always get to see what that is. Sometimes we don't get to make sense of some pain, but God has one and we can rest in Him and as we get to know him closer, mm -hmm. we get to know his presence. Yeah. And that presence is transformative. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> now, you've also been on radio uh, mm -hmm. a lot lately. Yes. You want to share some of that? Sure. Um, James Autry um, has a background with K Praise Radio. And um, recently we did five broadcasts, and we were just praying for revival in the Portland metro area and the Pacific Northwest and just praying for healing in mm -hmm. our area, mm -hmm. praying for God to release signs, miracles and wonders and for people to know the heart of God. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday morning, our SWAT team, SWAT stands for See What Agreement Transforms. Wow. Prays at Pioneer Courthouse Square. We pray for Portland and nice. the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Our nickname is the Flying Locksmiths. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> because okay. we don't just seek the keys for the kingdom, but mm. we make them as we go along. Mm. And so um, I encourage and I invite people if they would like to join us, you're welcome to. It's uh, Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. in Portland, Oregon. You have a standing invitation and afterwards we go out for breakfast. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you guys have been faithful to do that for mm -hmm. a long time. So that's prayer is awesome. my passion. I serve on oh, multiple yeah. prayer teams I know, and I know. just um, love the presence of God and how prayer changes things. We yes. can talk to the Holy Spirit yeah. and he shows us things that are supernatural more than we can see with our physical eyes. Mm -hmm. And out of that place of the supernatural, we can know God's heart and everything pours out of that place and that space. 
How long have you been on this spiritual journey, would you say? In night, I've known, I was a Catholic and I grew up Catholic okay. and understood <clears throat> what my journey was with the Lord through um, going to church each Sunday and going to confession and I understood who Jesus was mm -hmm. and read my Bible, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until like 1986 that I began to understand that I could have a deeper relationship with God that was apart from anything in a church mm. that had to do with Good. the person of Jesus Christ. Right. And so at that point in 1986, I made the decision for Christ and went forward in a church and understood for the first time um, the person of God and that I could know Jesus relationally. Yes. And um, that journey started me forward um, as I began to understand the power of the Word of God and um, the battle that we have and that the Word of God is true north and that this battle that we're in, uh, um, the fight doesn't change the Word of God. The Word of God changes the fight. Good. Yeah, <laughs> or how we perceive mm -hmm. the battle, right? Yeah, that's good. So how would you say God speaks to you most? I think I see Him and hear Him um, I have visions that the Lord gives me. I, I see like a video screen very often. Mm. I make space and time for Jesus. And mm -hmm. when I look at the screen of my mind, I, it's like I see a movie. And seeing the visions that God gives me, um, I just, I don't analyze it. I just go with it. I see that vision and sometimes I'll hear some words, I'll hear the voice of God and I'll hear the stream of what he's up to and then I share with other people what I see and hear. Which is quite a blessing, I have to say. I've been uh, the recipient of that and I'm very <laughs> grateful. Um, I see things too, so I would you say do. you're definitely a seer, a seer. And, um, but you're an intercessor and not everybody that prays is an intercessor. You really um press through you have this you. call on your life for that and it's you're, it's like you're constantly in tune it's like yes. you have an open heaven over you and you are constantly <laughs> some people it's hard to get to that place but i mean you're always on you're like boom and you're there you, you're always on that when i've been around you anyway uh -huh. and so i just i just uh admonish you in that and i just think that's awesome and you know like if we were watching a simulcast and we could see the screen and we could you could describe what you're seeing mm -hmm. on that simulcast mm -hmm. that's what it's like for me mm. and so i feel like i can um i'm just viewing what god's up to and a lot of times i practice dismissing distractions if a cell phone rings at a time when it's not supposed to or someone's waving a sign on the side of the road I think that's a distraction yeah. what's really happening here in the supernatural realm mm -hmm. and I practice staying in that place because as things uh, develop over the course of time mm -hmm. in our the times that we live in mm -hmm. we're going to need to be able to focus on what yeah. God's up to right I wrote a song about that called seated in heavenly places so mm. even though we're on the earth you know, there's a scripture that says we're seated in heavenly places. So we are, we're in this world, but not of this world. And That's so right. we are spirit beings, That's right. right, in a human body. And, uh, but I mm -hmm. like that about you. That we just talked about that in my last uh, interview that, you know, with the cell phones and Facebook and all that we mm -hmm. have available to us, mm -hmm. you know, turn the TV off. Not right. right now in this show, however, <laughs> but uh, distractions in your life, you know, that are stealing your time when you could, you know, get to know God better, mm -hmm. you know, he's a personal God and he cares about you and he That's good. longs for you and to spend time with you. Uh, so it says he's a jealous God of our affection and our time. Just like any relationship, you have to spend time with that person to get to know them better. That's right. Right? So that's huge. Yeah. I love what you said, we're seated in heavenly places. Yes. And in life's hot air balloon journey, we rise above the earth and we're, as we know our identity in Christ, mm -hmm. we're able to look down on our circumstances mm. from above and gain a heavenly perspective. Good. So when I pray, I don't pray from the earth and sending up prayers to heaven. Right. I pray from heaven's That's vantage good. point. That's good. And then we have sandbags of offenses and hurts mm. and pains that we can just cut those off and rise. And I didn't know this until recently, but um, a hot air balloon, you can't steer a hot air balloon. In the top of the hot air balloon, there's an opening. You can enlarge it or make it smaller. And when you do that, as you're making it smaller, it's hotter. And as you make it 
as you open it up, you make it cooler. And that's what you're doing to help the hot air balloon mm. rise mm. as it's warmer and, and go down lower. And as it rises and falls, you're catching the wind that's in the direction that that wind is going right. with those cross currents. Wow. And that's the breath of the Holy Spirit. Wow. The Holy Spirit takes us where His direction is. And it's our position to catch that wind and the direction of where He's headed. And so here we are seated in heavenly places, looking down on the earth from our hot air balloon. Mm -hmm. And there's this place of beauty where we're catching the breath mm. and the wind mm. and the life of the Holy Spirit and where mm. He's taking us. And it's a beautiful, that is, joyful journey. Yeah, that is beautiful. I like that <laughs> picture. That's awesome. So um, <clears throat> now you talk about Coco a lot. Can you explain to us who Coco is? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible calls the Holy Spirit comforter and counselor. I call him Coco. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there's times when there's so much pain inside of us. Mm. And I go through hard days. I have days where I'm in tears. Mm. There are some things um, I'm not living my dream yet, but I'm calling it forward. Right. And there's that time where I need comfort from Jesus but in the person of the Holy Spirit. And um, he's our counselor. Yes. We can ask him for counsel. Yes. So many times I ask him, Holy Spirit, what's your heart? What's your mind? What's your comfort and what's your counsel here? And then I move forward out of that place. And his ways are not ours. So right. we can just listen to that voice yeah. and just be with him. And I'm a writer and I live in the words room in my head. Mm. So I, I always am thinking about words, and I'm a wordsmith, and I like to write poetry, I like to make words up, you know, <laughs> permission granted, you know, right, to, right. Make, to write words, right. make words up as you go along. Yeah. But when I'm really connected with him at the deepest level, sometimes there's a space with no words, and that's a place where just being with him mm. and allowing his comfort. Mm. A lot of Wednesdays I take off, and I call them wordless Wednesdays. Mm. And I just go out in nature with Elohim mm. and hang out with him mm. and just listen to the swishing of the trees and let that childlike wonder out of my heart. There's a place where I'm just entering into his presence and being filled with childlike joy. And it's just looking at the dappled leaves and listening to the birds singing and just being with him. And that's the place of healing. Yeah. And a lot of times he heals us apart from words. And we're just hanging out with him, and yes. there's a place of beauty in that. Definitely. So yes. I invite people to connect with Coco. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, that is so good. Um, you said something that triggered a question, which mm -hmm. was, um, how would you explain to folks mm -hmm. that maybe don't think they hear very well from the Lord? Mm -hmm. What would you suggest they try to good. be able to hear the voice of God good. a little better? That's a great question. And um, first was what you talked about earlier, turn the media off. I don't watch TV. I have, I don't even have a TV. I have a screen where I can watch things that I've set up to watch in advance. Mm -hmm. So turn the media off, get away from um, all of that mm -hmm. and connect with God. I listen to the word a lot. I have Bible on audio. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Good. And so I'm listening to the word in my car, at home, while I'm putting my makeup on, as I'm getting ready for the day. And that's um, how I'm hearing from God's mm. voice as well. When I can't hear, it's very often I'll ask him, what's blocking the way? And what I find out is it's usually unforgiveness. Oh. And I have found that I'm not forgiving myself or not forgiving other people or not forgiving God. Hmm. And my God encounter happened that opened my spiritual ears when um, my son Ben was a baby. And he was four months old. And I had just dropped my husband Tim off at work. And Ben was in, little baby Ben was in the front seat with me. And he fell asleep with a rattle in his hand. And I thought, if I leave that rattle in your hand, it's sure to wake you up. So I took my eyes off the road and I reached across the car seat to, and I took the rattle out of his hand. And I wasn't looking where I was going. And the car jumped the curb and leveled a metal light pole. And Ben wailed. He just shrieked. But I couldn't turn to help him because my foot was trapped in the floorboards of the car. My foot never left the accelerator pedal. Mm. Some people came by, called 911, and the paramedics came and rushed to help us. 
and um, you, they use the jaws of life to pry my foot out of the floorboards. Oh my, just like this, my leg, mm -hmm. my whole back, everything. Mm -hmm. I had my eyes, my head hit the steering wheel, mm -hmm. I had two black eyes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move. And they pulled both of us out of the wreckage of the car. The car was literally wrapped around this pole. Um, we were taken to um, San Jose Hospital. Later, we were at Stanford University Hospital. And um, the Lord worked through surgeries to heal my fractured and dislocated foot and some of the back injuries that I had. But Ben had a fractured skull and brain damage. Mm. He was in the hospital for six weeks. I was, after I was released from my surgeries in the hospital, I was home hearing reports um, from people of what was happening to him. And over the course of time, God healed me and he healed Ben of mm. his head injury. Praise but God. it was so hard for me to forgive myself for what happened. Sure, right. And I couldn't forgive myself that day or the day after or that year or the year after. It took me over 20 years to forgive myself for causing my son a head injury. Mm. I Perfect. had no idea how to go about it. Right. I had no idea what to do. Right. I wanted to connect with God, but I didn't know how. And I heard people talking about forgiving others, but I didn't hear anything about forgiving myself. Mm. And I didn't know how to go about it. Mm. So this was the journey I was on. It was a journey to try to forgive myself. And I learned over the course of time how to hear the voice of God. And the Lord showed me as I was writing this book, The Quest for Self-Forgiveness, that I needed to stop and listen to the story. Sometimes you tell the story, and sometimes the story tells you. And as I wrote this book, in the five-year journey to write the book, the story told me. Mm. The story told me a whole bunch of amazing things about a God that I wanted to learn to know better. Mm. And the story told me about how it didn't matter what I did, but that I was redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Mm. The story told me that the blood of Christ covered anything mistake I made. Mm. I wanted to go back and I wanted to do one of those choose your own adventure things mm. where I could just choose an alternate ending mm -hmm. to what happened with that car. I wanted to go back in time. I didn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be Marty McFly. <laughs> I wanted to go back in time, right? right? And I wanted to change that one moment, mm. but I couldn't. And so I had to realize that there was a redeemer that was going to redeem what happened. Yeah. And I stopped. Wow. And as the Lord was giving me these precepts about expectation, He shared with me how I could get that freedom. And I feel like part of that, when we can't hear from the voice of the Lord very clearly, mm -hmm. we need to forgive other people. Um, we need to know that there's a china shop <laughs> inside the bull. Mm. Inside those people who mm. are hurtful to us mm. are fragile places. That's true. And we, we need forget to, that. We forget that. And wow. then sometimes we feel like we're at cross purposes with God and that we forget that He's good all the time. We need to pause and reflect and forgive That's Him. That's good. As a worship leader, I love to start out with songs about His goodness because He is a good God. Mm. Um, yes. Something came to my mind as you were talking. Now, you always talk about yourself and this forgiveness you've got mm -hmm. to do, but this had to have been extremely difficult on your marriage. Yes. It was very hard on our marriage, yes. I mean, I can't imagine. So did, not to bring anything bad up, but mm -hmm. did your husband ever, like... <laughs> when we were in the hospital, Yeah. my husband's name is Tim, mm -hmm. and we've been married for 37 years. Which is a praise God, which you're is still married, <laughs> right? That's like a celebration if anybody's married that long these years, these days, right? Come on. So, you know what? When Ben was in the hospital, he was in a um, medically induced coma mm. for weeks because, mm. um, because of the hematoma, the brain trauma. And I remember sitting in a wheelchair, visiting my son and um, saying, Ben, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do this. And my, yeah. s my husband, Tim, stood right next to me and he said, I forgive you, Mommy. He said it for Ben. Wow. And he never once never wow. once in these 37 years wow and ben is now ben is now 30 and um wow. in these 30 years since the car accident he has never said a word to me wow of condemnation or blame wow. at all that's huge it's enormous i mean because the pain he had to have been <laughs> feeling right oh my goodness that says a lot about your husband yes. what a support my Praise husband God. has super super 
grace-filled wow. heart. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, praise God for that. That's amazing. I, I wondered, you know, because I mm -hmm. haven't finished your book yet. I just, mm -hmm. I always wondered, how did he handle this? Yes. Because it impacted him just as hard, you know. I mean, my gosh. Both of you. He could have lost both of you in that That's day. That's right. And he That's didn't right. because of the grace of God. So, wow. Um, <clears throat> now, in this book, in your book, I love um, some of the things that you do. It, it's almost like it's a workbook also. And at the end of mm -hmm. each one of her chapters, I just, I really commended Lynn mm -hmm. on this because how many people do this? Thank you. They write their story. Mm -hmm. They want you to be touched. But she gives you actual steps to consider and to think about in your own life and to apply to your own life, uh, you know, activations um, and applications that you can put. Mm -hmm. So I just want to read a couple things. One is a uh, resentment is a toxic thought that can be released and replaced with healthy thoughts mm -hmm. of self forgiveness. How powerful is that? Right. Um, another one is our minds can physically change our brains. The power of the mind mm -hmm, and your thoughts mm -hmm. are so powerful, you know, and sometimes we cave into that stuff and we don't have to because mm -hmm. it can overtake us if we don't um, or enemy, if we do. The enemy wants to get in there with shame yes. and guilt and condemnation. Yes. Yes. And he wants to beat us up. He comes in with those thoughts, but instead of saying, look what you did, he words it in the first person. He says, look what I did. Mm. So then we're entering into that guilt and condemnation mm -hmm. as well right but romans 8 1 says therefore there is now no condemnation yes. for those who are in christ, christ jesus. jesus and as far as the east is from the west yes so far has god removed our transgressions from yes. us yes amen that is a good one um and i love this one laughter brings life to your brain and it's so true i mean you know, a positive attitude, laughter, you know, <laughs> brings oxygen to your brain and, and just, you know, it's, it's a good thing. You know what's really cool? What? That um, the Holy Spirit showed me <clears throat> that joy is a threaded needle that stitches together heaven and the earth. Wow. And so when we laugh and when we enter into that spirit of childlike right? joy, <laughs> we're, wow. we're um, stitching together. We're pulling wow. together heaven and earth That's with our joy. Awesome. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep that one for a long time. That's awesome. Uh, thoughts attract things. So what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on? Right? Uh, words focus our thoughts. Right? Um, and actions important. There's so many here. I, I, I'm not going to read it all because I want you to read the book. But it, this book, I couldn't put it down when I started reading it. And I don't have a lot of time to read books. But I'll tell you, I texted her that night after she gave me this book. And I said, Lynn, I can't put it down. This is a powerful, powerful book. I would really encourage, I think this belongs in every home, who has not been offended or hurt by mm -hmm. something that someone did, said, an action, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow, the, the power to forgive, because we're the ones that are held in the mm -hmm. bondage if mm -hmm. we don't. It's, they're going on about their life. We're the ones in the cage, right? We have to release it. Yes. That is so powerful. And you give so many awesome steps Thank you. on how to do that. So I just bless you with this book. I just think it's awesome. Um, There's going to be a companion workbook that goes with it too. Perfect. So that people can do the workbook and take those action perfect. items that are the activations and actually do those 31 steps. And then at the end of the 31, you can go back and use it as a devotional one day for each uh, one for each day of the month. There you and go. And that's just something to refresh and empower. Yeah, it is. It's so good. Um, just a quick question. What mm. steps can one take to mm -hmm. be healed of painful memories? You know, I think a lot of us have painful memories from the past that we visit and revisit. Like I was sharing that we are in a place of, I go back at this painful place. I still yell at Tim. I yell at my kids. I'm not perfect. Tim and I still get into fights. And I go back and I'll revisit that and I'll think, what can I do to heal that memory? What? How do I go back and reframe that? And um, the Holy Spirit gave me an acronym, RECALL, R-E-C-A-L-L. -L. Mm. First, we go back to the memory and we remember the memory and allow the emotions, those raw emotions and that pain to go to the surface of our heart 
just remember what happened at that time. What were you thinking? What were you feeling? What was going on? E is expect <clears throat> Jesus to show up. Expect to be able to see the face of Jesus, to hear the voice of Father God, to sense the heart of the Holy Spirit in that place. Mm. C is to convert. There's a divine exchange that's available to us where we trade a lie for a God truth. Good. God wants us to take away the lies of who we are, mm -hmm. things that say that we're a terrible mom or a terrible wife or something that says that we're a hurtful person. God thinks we're brilliant. God wants us to exchange the lie for a, that God truth and be ready to be transformed with that conversion. So good. A is for to um, accept God's forgiveness. Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. We can walk forward in that place of confidence mm -hmm. that he died for us. God forgives us. Yeah. And then L stands for let it go. Do oh. the Elsa thing, right? <laughs> and let go That's of what happened. Right. God forgives you. Wow. You can forgive yourself. And God oh. expects us to do that. So and then good. L, look for a scripture that goes with it. From the Word of God, mm. what verse goes with that? Mm. And to look for people to share it with because we overcome the enemy yes. by the blood of the Lamb yes. and, and the, word the Word of our, our testimony. testimony. And when we tell our God stories, people get empowered and they yes. get healed. Yes. And so it's my desire to know that people are getting healed. And I also just want to help people who have a story to tell. That's mm -hmm. one of my passions is to help people get their stories out there and to be able to... Um, Inside of them is a story that wants to be told. Mm. Inside of them is their story that wants, so I want to help people get published. Yes. And help people getting speaking out there. And, so they can um, reach so. you on your email also uh, yes. on, on mm -hmm. your site if they want to write a book. Mm -hmm. uh, we are running out of time, unfortunately. So we have less than a minute. Could you okay. uh, look at the <laughs> camera yes. and okay. just pray over them as the Holy sure. Spirit leads? All right. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for what you're up to right now. And I just extend an impartation of forgiveness for these people. And right now, I just want to speak to you, and I just want to say, God forgives you. It doesn't matter what happened. God forgives you. Mm -hmm. I just believe in you, and I know that your identity in Christ is one that's filled with joy and hope-filled expectation. I release for you a possibilitarian anointing that activates possibilities with hope-filled expectation. Mm. As you're walking forward knowing who you are in Christ, you know that you are completely loved, completely forgiven, and completely empowered with knowing that God forgives you and He loves you Amen. no matter what. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.